All right. We're all adults here. We all graduated high school and now we're in college, so let's be honest with each other. Raise your hand if you're attracted to a nice butt. Everybody likes a nice big butt. So, if you want a big butt, or nicer thighs, or just a more voluptuous figure, I'm here to teach you how to get that. Because I'm here to teach you how to squat. See, before you want to listen to me, let me tell you why you should listen to me. I've been squatting since I was 12 years old. That's six years of experience. And the person who taught me actually knew a shit. Uh, I was taught by Coach Lamar Greer out of Madera, California. Now, Lamar Greer is a professional uh, Olympic weight trainer. And he owns a gym in Madera where he teaches the athletes of the town how to properly lift weights. And under his tutelage, I feel as though I've come a long way, and now I can teach you what he's talking about. First, why should you squat? Well, squatting improves holistic strength. It, it works much more than just your quadriceps. It also works your hamstrings, your gluteus, which is your butt, and your abdominals, which gash us. <laughs> Also, it improves your overall health. It fixes your posture, because when you're actually squatting, you're required to have a good posture. You must stand upright when you complete the movement, otherwise you will fail. Furthermore, it makes your digestion regular, meaning you'll poop more. And that's because the actual movement of squatting is the natural movement in which humans defecate. So, it'll pump out the poop. <laughs> and finally, it improves testosterone within the body. And ladies, I know, I know what you're thinking. Testosterone, if I squat, I'll look like a man. Well, according to RenewMeToday.com in an article posted on their website in 2016 titled Benefits of Testosterone for Women, in the early reproductive age, testosterone is present at 10 times the amount of estrogen, leading experts to believe that midlife symptoms such as low libido, fatigue, and weight gain is actually caused by low testosterone, and that squatting can improve testosterone and lead to weight loss and a higher sex drive. So now that you know why you should squat, let me actually teach you how to squat. See, squatting can be broken down into three basic steps. You must brace your core, unwrap properly, and then complete the movement. And bracing your core is much simpler than what it sounds. All you gotta do is you gotta shrug your shoulders like someone asks you a question that you don't know the answer to. You shrug, and then what you do, take your elbows, pull them together, and take a deep breath and you hold it in, and now you have a braced core. And of course you don't hold it in the entire time, but you will take breaths very similar to that throughout the duration of your workout. After you have your braced core, you must now unrack properly. You keep your back and core tight, you step underneath the bar with level feet, and you drive upwards, unracking the bar. You take one step back from the rack. One step. Two or three steps is not required, and at that point you're just wasting energy. Finally, you place your feet slightly outside shoulder width and anchor your toes slightly outwards. Everyone's biomechanics are different, so the placement of my feet could be different from the placement of your feet, and the anglement of my feet could be different from the anglement of your feet. It just takes some playing around with, but the basic premise is still the same. Finally, you want to stop the actual squat movement. And let me break it down for you. If I fall, I hope they pay for my tuition. Uh, first, what you want to do is you want to break at the hips. And that means you want to break, almost like you're twerking a little bit. So you're going to break at the hips, not the knees. If you break at the knees, you're putting unneeded stress on your knees. And that is why people say squatting is bad, because they're doing it. Once you've broken at the hips, you proceed in a downward movement, almost like you're sitting back in a toilet, just like how you would sit back in anything. You're going to go down until you're at the level I am at, where my hamstrings are either parallel with the ground or below that. Once you're parallel, you keep a big chest, you push up, and as you see a final, final step, hips through. You kind of just do the opposite of your first movement, the breaking. So this is breaking, and this is hips through, and they're just the inverse of one another. Common errors are when you're actually squatting, you lower your chest. When you lower your chest, you lose all integrity of your back and your power, and that will cause you to fail. Another error is letting your knees knock, which means when you're driving upwards, your knees come together. That is also putting unneeded stress on your knees and cause, can cause injury. 
Another error is bad feet placement. You have no proper power within some of your more smaller muscle groups, such as your groin and your gluteus. An untight back has much of the same error as lowering your chest. You lose all integrity of your power unless you will fail the lift. And bad depth. It's not really an error, but a lot of people won't count your squat as legitimate if you don't get deep enough. And at the gym, you'll see a lot of people squatting to right there. And that's not a real squat, no matter what they say. And here's how I'll put together. This is me at the gym, squatting. Just after my workout. Yeah. And that's how I squat. Uh, you'll want to squat because it improves your everyday health. And personally, myself, I always feel better after a squat workout. And it's just, you know, who doesn't like big thighs and big butt? Thank you. Okay, Nick, how did it go?